some of the initiatives uh, the city is now pioneering in these uh, sectors, uh, like public-private partnership and uh, export promotion. Um, but other than that, uh, we have been uh, uh, always very active in uh, uh, building a successful and, and uh, attractive business climate in the city. Uh, and that if you look at different ratings agencies uh, like Financial Times or FDI Intelligence and others, uh, they've uh, rated Lviv as uh, among the top cities in Central and Eastern Europe for investment promotion, uh, business climate, uh, cost efficiency, also policy work um, uh, since the, the mayor took office in 2006. Uh, so it's been, he's been, he was reelected last year during the municipal elections. So we have another five years of this uh, good tradition to follow. Um, in our business uh, related uh, activities, because that, that is the main topic for our discussions today, uh, we pioneered the industrial parks and we have uh, two industrial parks in the city uh, that are open for uh, attracting uh, private investment and private investors. Uh, in fact, one of the parks uh, managed by the Dragon Capital now is uh, ready to build to suit basically providing full uh, all-inclusive uh, service to, uh, to uh, uh, private companies uh, to start production facilities here. Um, we have invested extensively in uh, modernizing our municipal infrastructure. Uh, we are number one client for the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. We have a number of projects with the European Investment Bank and the uh, IFC, uh, International Finance, uh, Finance Corporation and the World Bank. Uh, investment uh, into the roads infrastructure, um, improving our, uh, our sustainable mobility, uh, increasing rolling stock, particularly focusing on sustainable mobility like uh, electric transport, trams and trolley buses. Uh, so we are very much concerned uh, with the climate change and the, the uh, building Lviv as a green city. And that also relates to our infrastructural projects. Uh, on the PPPs, this is uh, the first city in Ukraine uh, who uh, took up this initiative after the law uh, on PPP was uh, significantly substantially amended in 2019. In July last year, we adopted our own list of 11 PPP projects, ranging from uh, projects in infrastructure, uh, like healthcare, um, train station uh, development, concession of uh, municipal companies like water supply company, district heating company, to underground parking. Also in the uh, uh, cultural uh, area, building a modern uh, art center. Um, uh, we have a prioritized a number of projects uh, where we work together with IFC as our lead ad transaction advisor. Uh, and this mainly relates to the healthcare sector uh, the, the infrastructure uh, sector, the train station with 20 hectares of the prime property right in the city uh, center of Lviv. With PPPs, we are uh, hopeful to uh, attract uh, private uh, investment into the municipal, the development of the municipal infrastructure uh, based on a number of uh, legal models. Maybe my colleagues uh, later on will uh, discuss uh, more on that. And of course, uh, uh, as I, as I mentioned, particularly uh, during the COVID times, uh, uh, Ukrainian and Lviv-based businesses, small and medium enterprises, were the ones who suffered uh, a lot of consequences. So we, uh, we couldn't stand aside. Uh, so we took up a number of initiatives like export promotion to support our businesses and help them sell more uh, uh, outside of Ukraine. And, uh, this uh, was transformed into adopting our own municipal export promotion program by the city council. And we are working closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, organizing uh, Zoom-based events, uh, promoting uh, Lviv-based exporters uh, on other markets. And we did already one with the uh, Embassy of Ukraine in the United States, uh, with Canada, uh, it was the United Kingdom. Uh, today we, had, we, hold, we held an event with uh, the Embassy in Israel, uh, we will have another one with uh, Czech Republic uh, later this uh, late in March uh, with Poland. Uh, every time this is more than 670 to 100 companies. So there is a huge demand uh, for uh, information, for uh, contacts uh, uh, with potential partners, distributors. Uh, 
and we plan to provide financial support to our exporters to go and, and, and meet with potential partners uh, outside Ukraine through uh, working together with uh, our partners like the USAID uh, uh, competitiveness, uh, co competitive economy of Ukraine project, uh, also the uh, export promotion office, which is part of the Ukrainian government. And of course the council of exporters, uh, which is part of the ministry of foreign affairs. Uh, so altogether, I think we are able and we will contribute uh, significantly uh, to the development of, of the export promotion uh, potential of the Lviv-based uh, uh, companies, but not only Lviv, because there are other exporters from other regions of Ukraine also joining. Uh, so this is uh, uh, briefly on my side. Uh, and uh, again, apologies for may not be able to be present at the start of the event, but I'm sure he will join us uh, during the course of the uh, of this webinar. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sergei. This really sounds exciting. Lviv's always been a center of uh, business activity, and uh, your IT development there has been amazing, uh, representing 20 25 percent of your total industry, uh, extending close to Poland and and the EU. Uh, it's amazing what creative things have been done there. And now it's more exciting than ever when you have uh, the city, the private business, and also bring in uh, international institutions like AID and uh, IFC and the European Bank. So it's really a public-private partnership with international uh, organizations and financial institutions to make this, uh, to make this all work. I know I always get every year I get over to Lviv once or twice. Sorry, I didn't get there last year, but I'm looking forward to uh, having a chance, hopefully this fall, to get over to Lviv and enjoy uh, all of your architecture and your coffee shops and and uh, visit with all your leading business is always a great uh, opportunity to go there. You're very Let's much welcome, now. Morgan. Yes, <laughs> we are taking good care of the city, so you're very much welcome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's turn to Jason. We had a previous webinar with the IFC, and Jason outlined uh, a very aggressive uh, and exciting program he had uh, in a whole lot of innovative areas, including uh, public private partnerships. So, Jason, tell us a little about quickly about uh, uh, your organization in case someone doesn't know and your commitment to some of these new financial techniques and some of the new laws in Ukraine, which allow uh, you and uh, public institutions and private investors to get together to really to make things happen that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Jason? Thank you very much, Morgan, for the introduction and, and thanks for welcoming me back. Um, maybe to pick off where we left off uh, in the last discussion and, and to start where, where Sergei uh, was leading us. Um, and that's particularly the, the PPPs and being pioneers. Um, and so I think the, what the city of Lviv prides itself on actually is, is similar to what IFC uh, prides itself on. We like to be pioneers and we like to partner with pioneers and why we have such an excellent collaboration with the city of Lviv. Uh, and I, I see that we have uh, Irina uh, Novikova, who's also joined us. And, and so it's, it's thanks to uh, the concession law and the concession framework that we're able to realize some of the ambitious uh, projects that, that you've referred to. Uh, we've shown that the concession model works in Ukraine. It works at the sovereign level. We have achieved success in the port sector in Ovia and Kherson. Um, we are expanding that model now to container terminals in Chornomorsk. Uh, Sergei had mentioned the rail uh, station concessions with Ukrzeliznica, where Lviv again is, is one of the, the pioneering uh, cities. So I, I, I remain very bullish about the, the concession uh, framework and its ability to, to realize large scale uh, important infrastructure projects. And what's interesting is that now we can not only do this at the sovereign level, the big uh, sovereign uh, infra projects, but with entrepreneurial cities like Lviv, we can roll out municipal level PPP projects. 
And I think that's, that's a, a very exciting development um, and one in which I, I hope will appeal uh, to your business association, Morgan, that we, we can attract uh, more businesses thanks to having the legislative framework and thanks to having open entrepreneurial cities that we can start thinking about some of the projects, realizing some of the projects that Sergei has referred to. So I, uh, the, the, let's take Ukrzeliznica, the, the rail station. This is enabling the, the state rail company to offload its non-core assets and monetize its rail stations, one of which happens to be in Lviv, and it's a very attractive land plot that could be made in, and, and has multi-purpose commercial use. So let's attract a, a, a private sector company or private sector companies, a consortium to realize that, um, which would both, again, serve a, a need for Ukrzeliznica to create value. It would mobilize private sector investment and beautify the city of Lviv. So a, a, a great project and, and Lviv indeed is, is one of the pioneers in realizing that. Uh, but it does, it's not just rail, it's also the health sector. We're aware that uh, Ukraine requires a, a great deal of modernization of health services and using the concession model is one way of, of, of bringing in more private sector investment into Ukraine's health sector. Right now, it's a fraction, private sector provides a fraction of the services. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that if we apply the concession model, we can mobilize much more private sector investment into, into Ukraine's health services, also in the city of Lviv. And Sergei also touched on, on water. Um, and, and there's a whole host of, of activities um, that could be undertaken uh, in terms of, of sanitation, um, but more, more broadly, the, the use of, of uh, improving water, water services in the city of Lviv. And, and happy to be pioneering uh, a lot of this together with uh, Sergei and, and Mayor Sadavi. Uh, so a lot of, of, of exciting developments. But uh, again, I think it's important to highlight that uh, the government has limited fiscal space um, and hence why we need more private sector involvement. We need more cities to realize and, and, uh, that there is an opportunity to mobilize private sector investment. And working with our colleagues like uh, city leadership, like Ministry of Economy, um, we can do quite, quite a bit um, that I think will, will be very interesting across multi-sectors and hopefully, again, will attract the interest of, of not only the companies that are already operating in Ukraine, but we can bring in new companies into Ukraine to meet these needs. I'll stop there for now. Well, Jason, uh, you're talking about about uh, uh, all these programs, it sounds good. Uh, you like pioneers, so we could probably say we have a 4P program, pioneers implementing public-private partnerships. Uh, as you say, we need pioneers, people willing to do things new to make these work. Uh, I do want to say that, uh, that uh, Sergey has been very helpful putting this together along with, uh, we want to mention Oksana Schuler who's been working closely with the city of uh, uh, Lviv and helped uh, contact us first about this program. We now have four other panelists that we want to start bringing on the program. Uh, I'll introduce all four of them, and then we'll call on them. We have Alexa Zaluska, Deputy Chief of Party, the USAID CEP program, which is a very large program. She'll tell us about that. And then we're very happy to have the Deputy Minister uh, the Minister of Economic Development of Trade, Arena Novakova, with us. Uh, the ministry has been very helpful, and we've had webinars with the ministry. And then uh, we have our friend from EY. EY has been a member of ours for 15 years. He's a Makola uh, Perhodka Associate Director. And then we have a private sector businessman, uh, Vladimir Mysek, um, Head of Capital Markets, Kushman Wake from so he'll be able to tell us a little about Kushman Wakeman and their interest in this, uh, in this program. So for, first, let's go to Irina uh, Novakova from the Ministry of Economic Development. Irina, thanks for being on the program. Tell us a little about the interest of the ministry in this uh, new kinds of programs and what all you're doing. 
Good afternoon, dear partners and dear participants. Thank you very much, uh, Morgan, that you organized such an uh, interesting meeting on this PPP topic and also a promotion topic. Uh, I am responsible in the ministry for the investment policy, including the PPP policy. That's why uh, um, uh, it's the highest priority for us because we fully believe that cooperation between the public and private sector gives the best result. And taking into the account the uh, limited resources, the limited state resources, the, the implementation of uh, important project is not possible without the participation of the business. Uh, that's why our the high priority is to implementing the PVP and also the concession project. Uh, concession law was adopted uh, in 2019, and our goal was uh, to implement the, the best international standards and also uh, implementing the uh, EU regulation in, uh, into our local law. Uh, also, we make the amendments about uh, to, to 25 uh, legal acts, including the law of the public-private partnership. That's why now we have very, very modern concession and PVP law. Uh, in 2020, the ministry um, adopted all by laws. The government adopted uh, all bylaws, which was prepared by the Ministry of Economy. Uh, and now uh, we are preparing together with the other ministries some potential PPP projects. As we mentioned, we create the PPP agency who is uh, working together with the central government as well as the municipal government. Uh, they are very close working with the Lviv because they signed the memorandum and uh, helping the Lviv uh, municipalities to preparing some, some project. Uh, also, we are very close work together with IFC and BRD because we fully understand that uh, preparation, the project with such uh, partners uh, have, have uh, like uh, the best quality. Uh, today, the ministry and also the other ministries uh, are working on such uh, necessary project that, as uh, preparation as the concession of the seaport Chernomorsky and also concession of the railway ferry complex of the seaport Chernomorsky. Uh, also, we're preparing the pilot project of the railway station concession, in particular Dnipro, Kharkiv, Vinitsa, Mykolaiv, Khmelnytsky, Chop, Kiev. Uh, and also we have already the concept note of the six highway project, PPP project on the highway Boris Polpol Tower, PPP project on the segment of the highway Kherson Mukolaev, uh, PPP project on the section of uh, international highway Yehodin uh, Lutsk, PPP project on the international highway of the first category and national roads Dnipro Krivoy Rih Mukolaev, PPP project on the highway Kiev Jeton Marina and also PPV project in the section of international highway uh, Kharkiv Dnipro Zaporizhia. That's why our the high priority is uh, to begin the also uh, PPP program in the road sector and also to work very close with municipal and start some municipal project uh, such as park in Lviv and uh, hospital project in the Lviv. Uh, our plan is to establish, uh, to make the amendment to the budget code and establish long-term budget obligation because we have a uh, one-year budget period and, we, and we, that's why we couldn't realize um, so important social uh, project, PPP project which are based on availability payments. Uh, also, we work together with the BRD because we want to uh, make the first ETC system for concession tender, and we hope that it will be the best examples uh, for the other countries. Um, I would like also to mention, I know that our topic is the PVP, but I would like uh, to mention if, about a few words about the, uh, the new law, state support uh, for the investment project with significant investment, and uh, which was adopted um, by the parliament uh, in this month. Uh, this project, uh, eligible uh, project for this law is um, in investment more than uh, 20 million euro. Project implementation five periods, uh, creation of uh, 80 jobs, um, and also uh, in the uh, capital expenditure agree agreement amount um, of support about 30%. Um, that's why uh, some investors could also take part in this program, which call like inv investment nanny, and have the uh, some income tax uh, exemptions and also what and customs duties for importing new equipment. Also, the government um, uh, allocate the land necessary for implementation of this project. Um, 
investor have the guarantee according to the uh, direct agreement between the government and the municipality uh, and a special uh, investment contract may be governed by, by a foreign laws. That's why is the main point of this laws. It's also in the focus of the government to realize some private project according to this law. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we work very closely uh, with Minister uh, Petrosko. Uh, we've had a webinar with him. Hopefully to have another one and also with your trade ambassador. We appreciate all the work from the ministry. Uh, let's now go to Alessa. Alessa represents one of the largest AID programs in Ukraine. They have a multifaceted program. They're working in many different facets. So Alessa, tell us quickly about what a CEP Ukraine program is and your involvement in uh, Lviv uh, or in these public-private partnership uh, transactions. Alessa, thank you for being with us. Thank you for invitation. Uh, so our program is more than 40 million program with the grants portfolio over 12 million. And we are in the middle of the five year uh, of our period uh, of activities here. And um, like uh, in, in the process of preparation for this uh, for this webinar, we have actually like filtered all the, all our activities and identified that besides the fact that our program is nationwide, more than 100 uh, Ukrainian businesses from Lviv and Lviv region participated in our activities. And actually, uh, I would like to mention that recently we did a great um, webinar, uh, like boot camp for, for Lviv exporters um, in cooperation with Lviv uh, Business Ombudsman and Lviv City Council. I would, um, I would like to recognize that it's a, like a, a, a special, um, a special for us to have uh, this program with Lviv. I'm from Lviv, so it's like uh, I'm, I'm proud of my city that it's so active in uh, expert promotion. And you know, uh, like we, we all know what happened five years ago when Ukrainian exporters lost their like traditional markets, CIS and Russian market, and tried to re reorient to. EU and, and other markets. And um, actually uh, we are helping uh, uh, with traditional tools such as uh, trainings. Um, we have different programs for established companies and for startups. And I would say that um, a recent trend is uh, like more and more companies and more and more startups are looking to US market. Nevertheless, it's a very sophisticated market and you should be well prepared for this market. And we are helping with this preparation. Uh, besides training, we trainings, uh, we are helping in participation um, in trade missions. And uh, for the last two years, um, nine trade missions um, have been done uh, with our uh, partners, with uh, mainly with associations, with um, IT association, uh, with organic association. Uh, also, we are uh, using such a new, uh, let's say, tool. Um, it's a matchmaking platform, which is in the process of development with uh, Lviv IT cluster. And it's going to be a new platform for connecting Lviv uh, IT business uh, with uh, foreign markets. Um, last year, actually, uh, in February, we did a, let's say, a, a sil a last before COVID uh, trade mission to Silicon Valley with uh, 15 Ukrainian startups. And uh, these days um, in Dubai is uh, again, Ukrainian delegation with uh, 33 uh, food producers are participating in Gulf food. Why I'm mentioning this is because uh, today's um, theme is like business moving forward. And we, we, we all know this uh, obstacles and restrictions that pandemia caused to business. But I want to mention that uh, Gulf food in Dubai is offline. So it's something like a sign that um, the new, uh, like, uh, we, we can get back to the new um, normal, normal business uh, conduct. 
So um, I'm, I'm really happy to participate in this webinar and uh, encourage all the associations to, uh, to work with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's go to the private sector now. Let's go to EY. I started working with Alexei Kretosov, the head of EY, uh, 13 years ago. Uh, we had a lot of interactions with him at that time and worked very closely with EY ever since. So, Makola, tell us, uh, what is EY doing in this area? What is your involvement? Uh, any suggestions you have for the business community who would like to participate? What's EY doing with PPP? And why are you involved? Morgan, thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation. Uh, my great pleasure to join this honored team of panelists. Uh, again, my name is Misha Prihotka and I'm an Associate Director for EY Strategy and Transactions team, where I lead most of PPP and infrastructure advisory projects. So everybody knows that EY provides a wide range of consulting services, but what is relevant to these discussions uh, during recent years, we gained decent experience in these PPPs. Uh, as financial and legal advisors, jointly with IFC and the BRD teams, we supported the Ministry of Infrastructure and Ministry of Economy with the pilot concession projects for all the on ports. And we basically work from initial pre-feasibility study, then feasibility study, development of the draft tender documentation, market sounding until the commercial closure. So we saw the full process and uh, supported, uh, enhance uh, with all the work on the field. Uh, again, supporting IFC, JF, and the BRD. Uh, last year, uh, EY also worked on pre-feasibility studies for mentioned other PPP pilot projects in airports, uh, pilot road PPP program, railway station concessions. Uh, by the way, now we are working on the pre-feasibility study for their uh, concession project of Chernomors Container Terminal and Lviv Railway Station. And by the way, we had a plan to visit Lviv next, ne next week. Uh, but we are not working only with public side. We also were engaged by private companies to develop their solicited proposals for potential PPP projects. So, uh, of course, uh, we highly appreciate involvement of IFI supporting the implementation of international practice. We here help to implement it in local reality, and now we understand how to uh, structure successful PV projects in Ukraine. Uh, we saw that these two pilot projects were critical to show to the market that PPP projects might be attractive in Ukraine to both public and private sites. Uh, it was enough of just two projects, and uh, now public sites and private investors are ready to finance next feasibility studies to push the process further. However, as pilot projects were, uh, as it was mentioned, at the state level, uh, it is reasonable to predict that number of municipal PPP projects may significantly overlap the number of projects from their central government. Thus, we are looking forward to new projects from local authorities. Uh, we will be glad to help here. Uh, of course, we were glad to see Lviv as a pioneer in the creation of PPP projects pipeline. The city we see that actively developing and it also reflects on its real estate market uh, in other spheres. By the way, EY also opened uh, in Lviv its second office in Ukraine. Uh, because we see here a large growth opportunity exactly in the city and in, in general in the Western region. And some of our clients already uh, required to our close presence. So I strongly believe that we will uh, be able to use our, this new office for new PPP projects, uh, supporting either their Lviv city team or potential investors. Uh, also, as a comment regarding the export promotion, I'd like to mention that uh, on the request from USAID and Competitive Economy Program for Ukraine, EY is currently finishing the development of the FDI strategy for Ukraine's government. And in principle, in general, with their, in line with the global near-shoring trend, foreign investors may leverage Ukraine's location and, of course, the Lviv's uh, location uh, closer to EY borders, our access to EU markets, dedicated but cost-efficient staff and resources to secure and optimize supply chains. So uh, I'll stop here. Uh, we'll be glad to answer other questions and provide uh, the floor to Vladimir. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mikhailo. Uh, you guys are one of the leading uh, consulting firms in the world. And we found out almost every business transaction needs to have a consulting firm, needs to have a lawyer, needs to have a banker uh, to make it all work. Uh, so, Vladimir, tell us what could tell us about Cushman Wakefield. What is it? What do you do? And why are you interested in uh, PPP? Uh, thank you, Morgan. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I think it will be good to start briefly about, uh, to say about Cushman and Wakefield. Uh, similarly to uh, ENY, uh, we are also a consultancy company, but focusing primarily on uh, commercial real estate. And we are in Ukraine uh, operating since 1994. And we're largely focused, obviously, on a private sector uh, prior to, to this uh, year, I think, really, because uh, there were certain, uh, certain um, uh, jobs and assignments which we were doing for the cities, but they were focused um, on a concept developments or some advices that we were proposing, like uh, the advice to the Kiev city, for instance, to develop Kiev business district, the advice to, Kiev, to Lviv city to develop uh, IT park, uh, but it was, was primarily the advice to the city. Uh, now, as the legal framework has been created for um, pri pri private-public partnership, we have the opportunity uh, to have those investors who are interested you know, in the projects in Ukraine. We have an opportunity to offer them uh, some options in, in private-public partnership and basically those options were already discussed with some of the investors. We had some uh, interest coming to the, uh, you know, the, the project uh, in the parking facility that uh, Lviv is promoting um, uh, recently. We understand basically that the interest is there. We see that some investors which were active, for instance, in the neighboring countries such as Poland, Romania, or Hungary, and where they were successful in those markets, specifically in these PPP projects, they are hungry and they are looking at Ukraine as a window of opportunity. And I think the key element was always the legal framework, honestly speaking. For my um, almost 15 years career in real estate, the legal framework was always important in Ukraine and was always mentioned as a as a key element, of, you know, because looking at Ukraine, for instance, from the commercial point of view, uh, the real estate looks very attractive if you are comparing it with the peer countries like uh, neighboring countries, yeah, like uh, Romania, Hungary. We are in double digits. We are offering like 12% return on, on uh, uh, you know, rental income from the properties in commercial real estate, 11% starting from 10, yeah? So it's double digits. If you look at the neighboring countries like Romania, they are at six and a half, seven percent 7%. Poland is even lower, much lower. But and then you question, why is that so? Yeah, why is that uh, in this way? Obviously the financial markets is the key because uh, those markets like <coughs> Romania, they have access to, to the debt financing, uh, very cheap financing that, and that boosts the whole development. But uh, Ukraine is attractive in this way, yes. Uh, so the legal framework was important. And now, as it has been introduced, we believe that largely those investors who were waiting for it are now satisfied and will look with greater interest towards uh, Ukrainian assets. I would like to say also a couple of words about Lviv's potential uh, of, from the point of view of the commercial real estate market. We see... Uh, the very much in, like the, the, the increasing demand for commercial real estate in Lviv. Uh, I think the driver industry was offices. As we saw it, uh, there was an inquiry from the private sector coming uh, to uh, really, you know, to, to, to verify what is the demand of the offices in, in Lviv and how much offices uh, in the future will be needed as uh, IT industry is a key driver there uh, and it's growing as we know uh, you know the IT industry is growing very fast you know like 15 20 percent annually so there, there was a very um, kind of 
in a way bullish uh, expectation that the market will, will require a lot of uh, new space. Obviously, COVID corrected that, uh, and we are now reassessing the whole uh, picture, but we still see the great potential for Lviv because it has a mainly large labor force a pool, a uh, lot of students, lots of young people, a uh, population of uh, around 1 million plus. Uh, the area has a lot of uh, population uh, in surrounding. Uh, the second sector, which is now greatly developing in Lviv, is uh, actually the logistic sector. Uh, the logistic was very much uh, very, um, uh, you know, the industry that was less impacted by COVID. And we saw, uh, you know, this reorientation that happened in Ukraine from the point of view that Ukraine started to cooperate more with the European Union. And Lviv is this bridge uh, in a way, yes. So this is why the companies are thinking about having, you know, the logistic uh, or, you know, or production facilities in Lviv. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the, um, the evidence of that is increasing interest to, to Lviv, such as, you know, the Dragon Capital CTP Park, the former CTP Park, now it's Dragon Capital's uh, industrial park, uh, and some other investors who, who are now developing uh, projects in the industrial real estate. Obviously, uh, the hotel sector should not be for forgotten. This is the, uh, you know, one of the key drivers in Lviv, uh, you know, tourism and business activity. And uh, the retail uh, probably is the last, but not least. Uh, at this note, I will uh, stop and will uh, allow the questions and uh, the following discussion. Thank you, Morgan, once again. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, out in the Wild West in the United States, when there were always what they call gunslingers uh, that were for hire, we said their business card said, have gun, we'll travel. I guess your business card says, have money, we'll travel. Uh, <laughs> yes. We're, we're, and we're glad that you have an office in Ukraine and that some of your money is traveling to Ukraine. Uh, Serhei, back to you. Uh, for the last 20 years, anytime I saw a U.S. travel agency advertising uh, to put together tours to Vienna, Prague, and Budapest, whenever I saw one of them or I called them, I would say, hey, you made a mistake. The tour ought to be Vienna, Prague, Budapest, and Lviv. You ought to add Lviv to every one of those tours and not just, uh, you know, go back to the old, same old places, Vienna, Prague, and Budapest. That's happening more and more. So, Sergey, can you give us uh, just a, a couple concrete examples of what you think the best or largest uh, PC PP projects you're working on in Lviv. You had you told me about several very exciting ones. Can you just give us a quick description of a couple of them? Yeah, uh, thank you, Morgan. In fact, uh, uh, most of our PPP projects uh, are all about uh, transforming Lviv, uh, Lviv's infrastructure. And I'm here. I'm not talking about simply road infrastructure or municipal public transport, for example, sir. Sphere, but taking a broader view, uh, talking about uh, a whole different level of uh, healthcare services, education, uh, uh, cultural infrastructure as well. We've been a, cap a cultural capital uh, uh, should have uh, or must have uh, the, the necessary infrastructure to host uh, uh, famous uh, world-class uh, cultural and art exhibitions, for example, uh, maybe host uh, art uh, uh, auctions so that people from all over Ukraine and maybe the world should come to Lviv and take part in those auctions and, and buy uh, art uh, products, uh, uh, masterpieces uh, from uh, uh, different artists, not necessarily uh, Lviv-based. So uh, uh, and that, that is our uh, overall objective, uh, again, linked to what you were just saying, so that we are uh, exposed that we are uh, on the world map as the uh, destination city, not only for tourists, which is also very important, we being a, a tourist uh, uh, center and capital, uh, but also for investment, for the, for the capital, because at the end, we all are competing for capital. So um, specifically, and uh, talking about the projects, which 
you know, these 11 projects, we want to attract more than 10 to 15 billion Ukrainian revenue of investment. And this is not debt, which uh, uh, is put on the balance sheet of the city, which we are also working very actively uh, with the money coming from the EBRD, EAB, and uh, I've seen others. But this is the private sector investment. Uh, the project, like in the healthcare sector, we want to transform our largest uh, emergency hospital uh, into a whole new uh, medical campus. It's a 9.5 hectares of our land plot with uh, three other uh, medical establishments adjacent to that territory, including the children's hospital, the, the uh, general uh, clinic and the medical college. Uh, and and this, is, this should be a, an area of where you, uh, as a citizen of Lviv, but not necessarily only as a citizen of Lviv, but as a Ukrainian, because we also look at, at growing the medical tourism by implementing the project, could get a high quality uh, um, uh, medical service uh, of, a, of a much broader, uh, broader assortment, broader selection. Uh, we want to expand uh, the hospital, basically building it by 100%, so more uh, good quality, top quality facilities added, more functionality. We want to start transplantology. Uh, we want to add oncology, um, more surgery rooms. Uh, so growing it surgeries by 150%. Uh, but not, not necessarily talking not necessarily only about the medical part. We want that um, families of the patients be feel comfortable, but also the educational, the medical, for example, university or academies that we have can use uh, the technology which will be there, uh, whether it's in a top-notch laboratory service or the uh, audiovisual diagnostics uh, be shared and be used for, for training purposes also uh, of the students. So a, a new conference facilities and the hotel uh, with conference facilities and, and the uh, accommodation uh, should be also part of that project. So it's, as you could see, it's a, it's a multifaceted uh, uh, PPP project, which could be split into a number of PPPs, uh, which are organized under one uh, umbrella. On the smaller side in the infrastructural, uh, the, being already mentioned, the underground parking project, which is, uh, uh, I think, the first uh, out of three or four that we can uh, that we still have room in implementing in the coming years. So this is a pilot project we want to, to test. It's a kind of a litmus a test. Uh, uh, we, want, we want to uh, make sure that the PPP mechanism uh, can be used to attract private investment into that project. It's a, it's a two level underground pro project in the uh, real city center on the outskirts of the UNESCO protected historical part of the city with, with huge uh, uh, traffic. Uh, so the, the the occupancy rate we look at this project would be around uh, more than 70%. The total investment of uh, more than 10 million uh, euro. Uh, and and uh, we are currently in the discussion during the pre-feasibility stage of, of the duration of the contract uh, and, the, and the tariff. But it goes without saying that the city will uh, for sure provide the necessary guarantees to the private partner uh, on the minimum um, occupancy rate and the guarantee on the tariff. And of course, the, the, uh, the, the, the private partner will, will also be ensured that there will be no uh, free parking uh, around that area, which is uh, extremely important so that this uh, contract is successfully uh, implemented. The train station together with the 18 hectares of the territory, and, and if you were in Lviv, you know that this main train station is a 10 minute walk walking different uh, distance to the opera house, to the city center. Uh, 18 hectares is the prime uh, territory next to the main train station. It's uh, uh, Volodymyr from Kushman Wakeful will, will definitely uh, confirm that. Uh, so we, we are looking into basically remodeling the train station, maybe based on the concession agreement, uh, make it more adapt to a modern uh, uh, view of what the train station is. And if you look, if you go to Europe, you go to the train station, and it's, it resembles more of the shopping center than the train station. So it has to be a mixture of, uh, of different areas, uh, different functionalities uh, to, the, to increase the comfort uh, and the, the accessibility uh, to the passengers on one side. 
on the other side, this 18 hectares of land should be turned or transformed into a, a modern district, uh, uh, similar to you see, what you see when you go to Vienna, for example, or Paris or, or Barcelona. This uh, uh, small quarters of mixed use, uh, commercial property, offices uh, uh, and the hotels and accommodation, again, that is all in the city center. And that would also uh, increase the attractiveness, investment attract attractiveness of the project uh, uh, as, as the whole. Um, we have, okay. uh, yeah, sorry, I can go on and on, so please interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Whenever I get to your train station, all I want to know is how long it's going to take me to get to one of your famous uh, pastry and coffee shops or to your opera house or to the Folk Art Museum or down where you have the, uh, the Holdemore uh, Monument and the Shevchenko Monument. Uh, it's a beautiful city. Uh, let's go to Jason. Jason, uh, about how many cities uh, in Ukraine do you have uh, some project going in uh, this PPP? Or about how many projects are you working on? And if somebody has an interest, uh, how do they get a hold of uh, IFC? Uh, give us a little summary of your nationwide program. And again, we appreciate you being so uh, pioneering and aggressive in this new area. Jason? No, thanks, Morgan. So I, I think with Sergei, uh, Olviv is indeed the, the, the most active in looking at ways that they can expand from just using their own budget resources to mobilize projects. Um, so we're, we're proceeding on, on both fronts. We're helping cities uh, mobilize private sector investment by offering them advisory services and investment. Um, and so we started this cities program in the city of Mariupol, uh, but we have uh, ongoing projects uh, in Zaporizhia, in Kriverik, uh, in Kiev, uh, and obviously in, in Lviv. Um, but we, we are looking to expand, um, and there are multiple ways that we can expand. So as I mentioned, one way is directly through a, 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 what we call a subnational financing, where we offer advisory support. Um, and that advisory support looks at ways that, at how uh, the, the, the financing can help with the procurement of rolling stock, for example. We're in the city of Zaporizhia. Uh, we're looking at, at creating a smart city. Uh, and to create that smart city, um, it will involve procurement of, of private sector services. Um, so different modes of engaging, um, by, but I, we, I would encourage uh, both private sector companies as well as cities to actively reach out. Um, we're very keen on, on expanding this program um, to urban, uh, not only urban transports, but as, as we're doing with Lviv, health services um, and other areas as well. Maybe finally, I'm very excited about another uh, initiative, uh, irrigation. Um, and obviously with, uh, with climate change um, there's, and, and more and more droughts in, in Ukraine, there's a need for irrigation uh, in Ukraine to ensure continued productivity and, and frankly, food security for Ukraine and the world. Um, so we're looking at rolling out an irrigation uh, model based on, on the concession model. And this will also uh, involve both private sector and the public sector to realize this. Oh, thank you very much for bringing up irrigation. I spent some time down in the, the Herson area, down in Perhotka and those places. Uh, looking at that irrigation system 20 years ago. It needed a, it was an amazing system that they put together, but then it kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, wasn't kept up. It needs a lot of work and it's certainly a, a valuable asset as Ukraine moves forward to be a major supplier of uh, food to the world. Uh, Alessa, if a uh, private company wants to find out more about your services and to work with you, uh, uh, what do you what suggestions do you have for a private company about how to get involved with you guys and find out more and be able to utilize your good program uh, with the support of AID? Uh, we are market driven uh, program, so uh, 
any association within the sectors we, we work uh, may initiate uh, some uh, expert-oriented program with us. The program to support uh, participation in trade mission is open till the end of September this year. So they may apply. I can share actually slides with you, Morgan, and uh, you can share with participants later on. Uh, so the interested party, I mean the association or a group of companies uh, may apply for this, um, for this grant program. Usually we support uh, applications with uh, co-financing. Uh, this means that the group of companies or associations should contribute part of their uh, financing into this activity. So uh, sometimes uh, separate companies may join uh, other activities. I mean, if um, organic association is organizing a uh, trade mission, uh, they may apply for a public call. So just follow our um, uh, public media or expert promotion office, um, maybe we can uh, do something with uh, Lviv City Council. And actually uh, Lviv producers of food or furniture may initiate their own um, trade mission and participate in, uh, uh, in some exhibitions or organize a uh, trade mission uh, to, for example, we had a trade mission for food producers um, organized and like initiated by ambassador of Ukraine in the um, Kingdom of Netherlands and it was organized for, for the benefit of Ukrainian uh, producers of food and even one company from Lviv region participated in this trade mission. So it, it's based on uh, the initiative and desire and possibility uh, of um, uh, and readiness of a particular business. They may initiate um, uh, any activity with us uh, in trade promotion. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Mikhailo, if I remember right, if I want to get a hold of EY, I go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac, and then I walk down the street on Kushatik and go up the elevator, and there's your very large offices. So uh, people can find you by doing that. Uh, uh, if anybody wants to talk to you and uh, about your wide variety of services, what uh, what uh, advice and counsel would you have to a company about how you could help them and uh, after they get their Big Mac? Uh, thank you, Morgan. Of course, we are still there, so we still can combine their visiting the McDonald's and visiting the Y in one building in Kiev. Uh, of course, uh, we are glad to see people here in our office, but also we have all the key information and key contacts on our website. Uh, of course, uh, we participate in different uh, business associations, uh, of course, US, UBC and others too. Uh, but uh, also, if you are specifically talking about their potential participation in PPP projects, for example, uh, we are glad to support uh, private investors in, in two different ways, let's say. Uh, so, of course, we are waiting for pilot projects initiated by the public side, and uh, especially the experience of all the Kherson uh, projects show that it's extremely important to uh, start an uh, of the potential projects earlier than the, pro uh, than the tender is, has been announced. Because so uh, we are glad to support companies to look at, at different targets to uh, to evaluate them to prepare the bid. But also, what is important is that uh, our legislation allows, uh, especially when pilot projects uh, are there, uh, to, uh, to to propose the government both central or local uh, unsolicited proposals where they are ready to uh, obtain it. And if a private companies is interested in some projects and uh, currently it's not in the list, for example, that uh, cities uh, propose, uh, private companies also may propose their view and pr uh, 
prepare in of course in, in cooperation with the city with the local uh, with the central government to, to prepare the feasibility study and propose the projects and by the way legislation puts some benefits for such companies uh, like uh, compensation of uh, um, expenses that companies spent or that in case the company will is not winning the tender or, or some others that's why uh, we believe that uh, especially after pilot successful projects that we are looking forward from uh, Lviv city uh, we believe that number of uh, projects may significantly raise both uh, supported by uh, local authorities and supported by private companies uh, thank you very much uh, is arena still with us um, apologies morgan arena just sent a message that she had to leave uh, being called urgently by the minister okay that's fine. We do know that the uh, ambassador of trade for Ukraine is in the ministry and we talk about exports. Uh, let's get back to Jason real quick. Jason, uh, uh, if you were talking to the president, the prime minister, the Rada, about what they could do uh, in terms of laws, regulations, rules, et cetera, to improve uh, the framework within the government of Ukraine uh, for public-private partnerships and these new creative things, what uh, suggestions, advice would you have uh, for them about how to improve the, uh, you know, the local governmental uh, structure and support for this program? No, it's a, it's a great question. And, and luckily there's a very good answer. And, and the, the majority of the legislative heavy lifting has been done. Um, and, and as Sergei has mentioned, as Irina has mentioned, the concession law was that primary legislation required, uh, which was adopted earlier in, in, in 2019. Now, there's certain secondary legislation which would be helpful. And Irina had mentioned this earlier on as well. So the way the Ukrainian budget process works is you have one year uh, budgeting. Now that works in most cases um, but for those projects that require long-term availability payments, and this will likely apply in the health space, it certainly applies for the road projects, you need long-term certainty uh, for these availability payments. Um, so there is draft legislation that has been proposed. We hope that it will be approved by RADA um, because this is what is going to be key in realizing the, the large-scale road PPPs and making the health PPPs viable. Um, but again, I, 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 I want investors to, to be aware that the concession laws, the concession framework has already been proven. There's a little bit of tinkering still required for, for other sectors, which will be uh, tested in, 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 the, in the coming days. Well, we know all the business associations support this program. So we want all of you know if, uh, if the business associations uh, could contact somebody, could write a letter, could put uh, some of these ideas uh, uh, into writing uh, and uh, even contact some people, please let us know. This is a two-way street. We'd like to hear from you. We'll share it with other trade associations as we all work together as a team to improve the uh, and expand the business environment uh, in Ukraine. Well, Les, I know part of your program is to help bring about policy reform, help Ukraine to be more competitive, uh, to meet more international standards. Any comments from you about this whole area of what the government could do uh, to help Ukraine uh, be more investment friendly, to be more competitive? Um. We have helped actually uh, Ukrainian government, the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade uh, in their negotiations with Turkey. And these uh, efforts were, forced, uh, were, were focused on development of a CGU model, a model that helps business and the government to better understand the benefit of the free trade agreement with Turkey. And uh, soon, potentially, more agreements could be initiated. It's, it's one of the ways how to attract, actually, investments into Ukraine. The more free trade agreements we have, the more expert-oriented companies uh, will be interested to locate their production here. 
Um, in, in addition, uh, we are not very active in in the way of like improving improvement of like standards in Ukraine, to be honest. Uh, but uh, we are uh, helping Ukrainian government to be more transparent. Uh, for example, uh, our program was involved actually in uh, privatization of the Hotel Dnipro and uh, Cushman and Wakefield were involved as well. So uh, this is one of the projects where we helped the government and the state property fund to uh, privatize the Ukrainian uh, asset, big asset uh, in a more transparent way. So the, 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 the foreign investors may um, actually renew their trust in Ukraine. And this is actually the main, uh, the main goal should be the one of the main goals of Ukrainian government is to build trust with potential investors, uh, those who may uh, open production in Ukraine or uh, start a PPP project. So, be like Ukrainian government should be uh, should be reliable partner and should um, encourage uh, uh, like should ensure that they uh, will not change the um, rules and uh, like uh, in the middle as it uh, actually happened with the green energy, but uh, failure, we, we should still talk about failure since it's like good to mention that they should know that this is a bad practice. So they should uh, ensure uh, at all the levels that they are reliable partner. Well, thank you very much. This is all very exciting. We worked several years ago with four or five uh, U.S. companies that came in and formed a partnership with a city to improve their utility plant, their electricity, uh, work with them on sanitation. In other words, and they would do an agreement. But once they did the agreement, then uh, uh, the city wanted to change the rules or somebody wanted to get their hand in the pocket. And uh, of course, there were no international financial groups involved. The laws weren't very good. And unfortunately, every one of these companies soon figured out how they were going to get out of this deal with this city and, and leave Ukraine and not come back. So it was really sad to see so many small cities uh, who needed a private company who could not afford all the new facilities, who would do an agreement and then they would do everything possible to mess it up. But I think with the new laws and with the international financial groups uh, and cities like Lviv, the possibility of these being successful is, is going to be uh, much higher. So Demer, uh, when you guys are doing your due diligence, uh, we always have companies that come back and say, oh gosh, it's a little, it's about eight or nine little small deals that are probably going to keep this from working. The bottlenecks in here, which just don't work for an investor. Uh, what would you say in terms of what could be improved from your point of view uh, by the government of Ukraine to help these be more uh, viable and uh, attractive from your point of view? Yeah, I, I think th uh, I think I would agree here with uh, Olesya uh, very much because uh, from the records that uh, uh, from from our observation of the market, from from what we see, how investors react uh, on the privatization processes, I could say that the whole uh, level of trust started to build up when the state initially took over um, a lot of um, assets. We uh, are banks, uh, you know the. The, the, the banks that were taken away from the market and the assets that they uh, that were um, mortgaged but were not performing these non-performing loans uh, were taken away and states started to sell them and they introduced the whole uh, concept of prozoro sale you know I, I recall the first notion you know when the prozoro sale was introduced so there was not that much interest among the participants on the market both local and international but then when they saw, uh, you know, the uh, one, two, three deals happening on the market and they saw that actually this is not about like changing of the rules. So if we stick to the, you know, the process, if we, uh, you know, put our bit in time, this is all public, everything happens. 
and they started to trust. And what we saw actually on the uh, later stage in 2018 and later in 2020, uh, when Hotel Dnipro was privatized, it was so many participants who were competing, you know, this is, this is the key element. So they understood the rules are there and they were ready to compete because they understood that there, is, there are rules, yeah? And in terms of the state, I think the predictability is the key because one of the issues which I'm coming across very often is the return of VAT, for instance, yes. So uh, it's very, uh, in Ukraine, when you are acquiring uh, property, you are typically acquiring it as a, uh, either as a company, then there is no VAT, or you can acquire directly the asset and then there is a VAT involved in the process, yeah. So when you uh, pay the VAT as an investor, then you uh, expect to get back the VAT. Uh, we are, there, are, there are different scenarios. Uh, worldwide, there is a scenario that you can return VAT. We are like 60 days in some, I think in Israel, or 90 days, uh, some other countries. So in Ukraine, what you can do, you can offset VAT against future uh, payments from the rent. So rent payments are including VAT, then you are offsetting it. So it's also very important for the investor to see that this offsetting is timely and he gets the, his returns in the scheduled manner. Because if there is no predictability, then the whole thing is very volatile. and. Um, it's th this what actually is not very, the, the investors are not very keen about Ukraine when there is a volatility and, and, and not uh, lack of predictability. I think this is it, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Then uh, let's go to some uh, final closing comments from everybody. And I'd like for you to comment on any uh, suggestions, advice you have for, uh, private companies, uh, international, domestic uh, uh, investors, international and domestic, other people that it takes to make these, who are looking at this program and who say, hey, maybe I ought to take a look at this. What advice and counsel for, do you have for them about how they should prepare? Uh, and that uh, any advice and counsel you give about uh, how they should get involved or, or be more active or take a look at this. So let's start with uh, Jason. Uh, Jason, what would you say to uh, all these potential private players that we need involved in Ukraine in these kinds of programs? What would you say to them as your advice and counsel about how to get ready, jump in, get wet, swim, uh, take a risk and uh, become a player not sit on the sidelines. Jason, your, your suggestions to the private community. No, I think it's a great question. Thanks, Morgan. I encourage all private sector companies interested in, in, in being a part of Ukraine's development to be proactive. Um, so I, IFC is uh, trying to take a, a leading role together with our government counterparts to create opportunities uh, for them to invest. Um, but there's, there, there are, of course, other avenues um, to either reach out directly to myself, reach out directly to, to Sergei, reach out directly to Irina um, and, and share your ideas and suggestions. What, where, where do you see the opportunity? Where, where are you seeing the barriers? I mean, similar to, to your offer, Morgan, uh, the, 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 uh, the more uh, voices we have, the more ideas we have, the better. Um, e even when designing a PPP project, it's on us as, as transaction advisor to be uh, working together with the private sector, sounding them out, understanding what's, what's feasible, what, what's not, sounding out what's bankable, what's not. And that, that, these are all critical to ensuring having a successful project. So I, my door is always open, please reach out, but I, I encourage uh, uh, all investors, all private sector companies uh, to be proactive. I think there, there is a lot uh, cooking in the pipeline, um, but uh, uh, we always welcome more. Uh, thank you very much. I do want to say that to all those who are listening, everybody here has given me their email and their 24 hour, 24 seven mobile telephone number for me to share with you. Uh -huh. uh, uh, so you can be in touch with them. 
but yeah, let us be a facilitator. Uh, so Mikhailo, uh, besides hiring IEY as a consultant, what other could private groups would you recommend they do to get to jump into this picture? Um, of course, I will just uh, support, uh, first of all, what Jason's already said, that the productivity of, uh, of private companies is hugely important, especially during the preparation of their pilot projects, meaning that uh, uh, the, the new projects are proposing, but at the same time, some mechanisms, uh, some details may be clarified at the initial stage, especially if investors will be able to propose to advise us to, to, to propose their view. Of course, on new projects, uh, it, it will be extremely important to propose ideas also uh, as we know the PPP agency who is working actively to support different lo local authorities and as we understand also works with the Lviv city and of course more actively look at uh, Ukrainian market in general there are a number of opportunities and of course uh, there are some risks but uh, it, it's often can be uh, fairly paid. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Vladimir, your company, uh, uh, where's your headquarters? And you have offices in many different cities uh, uh, in Europe and other places. Uh, so there's various places where people could interact with your company. Uh, tell us a little more about uh, where all your offices are and your recommendations about how uh, uh, potential players could get involved with you. Yes, uh, we, uh, as our uh, our headquarter globally is located actually in the United States in Chicago, uh, but uh, in Ukraine we are based in Kiev. Um, so um, our address is actually accessible on the website. It's Business Central Leonardo. It's very central part of Kiev. Um, you know, we, we are open. Our contacts can be, um, as I said, reached on the LinkedIn, on the website of the company. And we'll be happy to, um, you know, make introduction to the investors to the uh, world of real estate specifically, the commercial real estate and uh, development uh, sites. And we'll be happy to uh, guide them on how to, you know, how to develop what is the highest and best use for sites, for the projects that they have. And we'll be happy to nourish the projects uh, specifically in the public-private partnership. I think this is this is an interesting area. Uh, we had been in some discussions. We see that investors are keen to explore that because I think that uh, if 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 some investors are having the the view that country is risky or somehow uh, you know there is a lack of sort of support. So the, the, this kind of partnership will sort of, you know, in their eyes will be um, or should be the, the, the image of cer certain confidence that, that is brought to this uh, whole uh, venture. So um, we look forward to cooperate and thank you. Well, that's, uh, I think you said your large program is going to be around three more years. Uh, is that right? So you're you're not going anywhere, and your main office is in Kiev. Do you have any other offices, or what suggestions do you have for companies that might be interested in finding out more what you do and trying to cooperate with you? We have office only in Kiev, in Leonardo, as Vladimir mentioned as well. But uh, all our staff is working online. And uh, I would encourage Ukrainian producers, Ukrainian com companies to invest in themselves, invest in their expert readiness in participation in uh, trade missions online or offline, in um, looking for partners uh, for market linkages uh, abroad, um, and use opportunities that uh, our program, uh, that available in our program. Uh, startups can apply, still can apply uh, to participate to EO Business Incubator till 12th of March. And uh, as I've mentioned before, trade missions program is open till the end of September. And um, foreign companies, I uh, investors or buyers, I encourage find a counterparty in Ukraine, you may find like any industry association or a, a, an organization that may help you to find uh, necessary information. Uh, believe me, 
Ukraine is changing for the last uh, like uh, five years. It, it's like significant, like uh, significant leap in 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 everything uh, in uh, digital transformation. Uh, soon, uh, Ministry of Digital Transformation will announce and will enable, hopefully, the city project, uh, the new virtual regime for startups and technological uh, companies with a special uh, taxation and labor uh, conditions. So uh, stay tuned, uh, look for opportunities and reach us if you need any information. We, uh, we will provide everything that we have in house and we'll connect, uh, we like, uh, We'll connect with everyone uh, within the country. Well, thank you very much, Olesa. We want to thank Olesa and Jason and Irina, Makalo and Volima for their uh, participation here and for their participation in this very new, exciting uh, opportunities for Ukraine. So now we'll go back to our host, Sergei. Sergei, uh, thank you very much for uh, suggesting this idea. Thank you very much for your creative work. And like you've always told me, come to, come to Lviv, stay at least a week or 10 days. It'll take you that long to see everything and enjoy it. Drink a cup of coffee, leave all your money here, set up an office in Lviv, and uh, then we'll all move forward together, buy an apartment. So uh, you're a great salesman for Lviv. Any uh, final comments from you about uh, why people should come to Lviv and work with you and uh, jump into this very creative area in Western Ukraine to help Ukraine move forward? Your final comments, sir. Thanks for being such a great salesman for the city of Lviv. Thank you, Morgan, for these uh, very kind words of yours. And of course, thank you for for your efforts uh, and, and the team's effort, in fact, on putting together this, uh, this event. You know, uh, Lviv's motto is uh, open to the world. Open to the world, meaning open to new opportunities. And we are basically living, uh, living this motto uh, in our daily work, in our daily activities by creating, innovating, uh, new mechanisms, new tools, uh, uh, in order to uh, open up these opportunities for uh, either private sectors uh, uh, or others to come to Lviv as tourists or to invest in Lviv uh, uh, as investors. And I would risk to say that uh, uh, cities uh, and a city, a unique city like Lviv in Ukraine can be a, a more reliable and more stable, more predictable partner than, than the state. Cities are more stable in Ukraine for sure. Uh, like last year, we had these municipal uh, elections. We have five years now with the mayor in office, with the city council in office, with you can trust on or you can expect more or less uh, a same stable uh, policy, unchanged. Uh, and we can be creative. Uh, and with the PPP model, with uh, export promotion, with other new mechanisms coming in place, like industrial improvement of industrial product, uh, legislations as well, this new investment from a uh, law on, on significant investments, which can provide you 20, 30% uh, uh, payback on your capex, on your capital investment. These are all uh, tools that we are ready here to, to launch and to uh, provide, make available, make accessible to uh, potential, uh, uh, potential uh, partners. And you can interact with us uh, either through uh, Lviv Business Ombudsman uh, Facebook account or write into us directly with uh, any of your uh, questions and suggestions. Uh, we, are we are here to, to serve you. We are here to help you. And thanks again, Morgan, for uh, putting together this event and for excellent moderation. So, so Morgan, if Thank I you very add, much. add to the, the sales pitch. So I, I think the, I, I mean, Lviv indeed is, is, is leading the way in, in many regards. And, and by the time uh, the global travel uh, is permitted. Once again, we have the pandemic under control. You'll have the opportunity to see a brand new Lviv rail station. You'll be able to ride on an autonomous trolley bus. The water sanitation issues, I mean, drink not only the coffee, but drink the water. Uh, and we'll also have the opportunity to even have medical tourism in Lviv. So I'm, I'm very 
uh, ambitious about Lviv's prospects. It's, it has a great starting point, um, but a, a lot more uh, to realize in, in this city. Well, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I visited with uh, Andre several times at his office in, in Lviv. It's always a great experience. We appreciate the leadership that he's been providing to that area. Uh, I would like to say that uh, next Tuesday is going to be our next webinar. We've had about 25 of them. Next week, we're going to take up a very important subject about what does the Biden administration want or expect from the Zelensky administration? And what does the Zelensky administration expect or want from the Biden administration? So we have a very expert panel that we're putting together. We'll make that announcement. A very interesting topic about how to improve, expand, and strengthen the relationships between the United States and Ukraine. So uh, again, thank you very much for everybody. And uh, as we say uh, for 2021, full speed ahead. Thank you, and we'll see you again as soon